everyone, I'm Wummy Bello. Welcome to The Wummy Bello Show. Every episode, I'll be bringing you unfiltered stories from old and new friends who've given me access into their most vulnerable and life-changing moments. Each conversation will take you on a therapeutic journey with laughter and refreshing relatability. On this episode, I'm sat with well-recognized YouTuber and social media influencer, the lovely Jenny Jenkins. Being a pioneer in the YouTube space, Jenny walks me through how she got started, the many ways the industry has changed, dealing with growth, and so much more. I cannot even deal that I'm sitting here with an actual icon, like my personal icon. I was talking to my friend earlier and I was like, how do I want to start this conversation with Jenny? Like, what do I want to say? And I was like, I just want to be completely honest and talk about my first like actual experience with you and like what impacts like your videos when I was first watching them like back in the day, like what kind of effect they had, it had on me. And I was just talking about like in terms of buying hair, I remember it was your video that I saw and you were wearing a wig and I was like, Wow, like this looks like actual hair. Like this is crazy because prior to you know your videos, like a lot of us had never seen that level of like glam and like mm. something like that seemed reachable. You know, yeah. I remember saying to my mom, I was like, "This is the video. This is the woman. I need this hair." And that was the first time I got a wig, like from oh, your, wow. which is okay. crazy. But I don't want to dive into like your YouTube and your career first. I kind of want to know like you as okay. a human and like your childhood and like upbringing first. So walk me through that. What was I know you're not from London. No, right? I, um, well, my parents live in Manchester, so really? from my summer northerner. So I've I've lived in London for like six years. I still feel like a northerner, though. I don't think I I, no, I, mean. I can see myself as a London person. The accent's still, gone, though. It's not like as strong. I mean, as it comes and goes. It depends on who I'm talking to. Really? So you so feel like when you're talking to like your northern friends, yeah, it's, like it's kind of switches more back. intense. So what was it like? Grow? Did you grow up in Manchester then? So I was I was born in in Nigeria. So I was I oh. moved to the UK when I was ten. So been here ever since so really? yeah most of my childhood obviously was oh my gosh do you remember your childhood like when you were because I, I grew like up in Nigeria as well blur. really like, like the first yeah honestly the first 10 years I feel like Didn't I, mean, really I, exist. I remember like bits and bobs like yeah. little like images and stuff but like not like the entire time which is really strange and my brother said the same thing as well like he just he feels like it's a bit of a blur as well is it like your older brother or my, I'm the oldest so oh okay got you yeah my the one after me so you literally so, don't yeah. even remember like your what I life was like back in Pretty sheltered, pretty mm -hmm. simple, pretty. Mm -hmm. I mean, was it quite a big like transition being some being someone who was based in Nigeria to then transitioning and coming to the UK and like going to school in the UK? Um, I remember that I was nine, well nine ten. Mm -hmm. and obviously, that's like you have to be what year five. Yeah, yeah. Year? And I was in year seven mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So the, the the I don't know what the the dynamic was. A bit, it's a bit. So worse. yeah, so yeah. I had to literally have to go back two years when I got here. Because obviously I was no. in I was ten eleven. So oh usually that's year seven. Yeah. Over there, so it was a bit of a strange one. But yeah, I mean it was a bit weird. Like I never saw white people before, so it was like the new. Obviously, obviously on TV. And yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. But like in person, and I remember bits and bobs, but not so much. But I remember like the first day. Yeah. Um, well, the next day, all like most of the white girls came in like braids. I, I had I was wearing braids at the time. Yeah. So like lots of the Look, girls. What, like your first day when you went to school, you were wearing yeah, braids. Yeah, I was wearing okay. like, braids like like yeah, yeah. and stuff. And then the next day, literally, most of the white girls would do the same thing. What they just copied they you? They literally were wearing oh, like braids. No which was so funny. How did you so, find that? Was that quite weird for you? Or was it? I mean, like, it didn't matter. I thought it was cool. I, mean, I didn't really think much of it, but. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was quite interesting. So did it feel, did you ever feel like you didn't fit in? Like, because I'm just thinking, because obviously I was born in Nigeria as well. Mm -hmm. And I came to London, like when I was fairly young as well. And I remember distinctively like watching, like uh, there was a white um, BBC presenter that I was watching at that time. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I need to change my voice. Like this, like this. Yeah, I, had a I fresh literally, accent. I I literally like, nah. lost my accent within a month. No, I was like, like, was I that ha intentionally though? To, yeah. Really? I, like, I, feel, I just like I feel weird. Like no one sounds like me. Like what's this voice? And I need to like be normal because I'm already Fact, looking yeah. weird already. And I, I definitely didn't feel like a how toxic is well. that? That to us, that was not normal. I know. So, so what did you do to like weird. change that? I just obviously I watched it on TV and lots of shows and stuff, lots of movies, and then like just like kind of like emulating the whole vibe. Mm. But yeah, it literally was gone in a month. Within so a month. Were, were the kids in school at that time like ever making fun of your accent, or did you feel did you feel withdrawn from them? Not in really. Way? But I just felt like I wanted to sound like them, mm. basically. No, no one. I, I wouldn't say I was like bullied or anything. Or mm. like, I just felt like an out, like an outsider. So wow. I just wanted to like feel like I fit. But I still didn't feel like I fitted in anyway. At any point, like no, not even until like when you got to like probably the until like when I got into high school. Yeah, and even with that, I didn't feel like I was like I've always wanted to be like you know the popular you mm -hmm. know. The, because in my school it was literally probably white. Yeah, because I was, was thinking Manchester. It's not like yeah. So literally, it was like the. 
Is that the, the, the Mayfair Chelsea? Oh, version. vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know, Ch did you ever watch like Real Housewives? No. There's well, like, not there's really like the little Cheshire little version, but like, the Manchester version. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. Like, the, the like, rich super English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I went to school. Oh. So it was no predominantly way. white, and then literally one black person every year. Mm -hmm. So I was like, obviously, I'm the only black girl. So it was a bit of a interesting time was it i know because i know like back then you know there were certain conversations that like we wouldn't have with you know our parents whether mm -hmm. it's about oh i feel and i guess like back then there was no like no one really had the the range to like discuss that to be like mm -hmm. oh i feel like an outsider or whatever so yeah. when you kind of felt remotely like that sense of like i'm not i don't really belong or like i'm not really i don't look like them mm -hmm. who what was your outlet like where did you go to like kind of figure that out or like get over that mm, it wasn't much of escaping i was just more like trying to find what how i could fit, fit in. in so like clothes wearing really? stuff and the stuff i listened to like i've literally been through every single trend or every single like oh my gosh what's been like, the most bizarre trend like, like now that you're looking at jenny now you're like what's this who does, who does that that's a skater vibe you know the, the, the baggy jeans oh, and like the damn. trainers and like i even went for like a goth moment as well no how old know. are you when you were doing goth 15 16 no. i've literally been through every single one of them but yeah, I just kind of trying to find where I was, and it was just—it was a bit of a funny, a weird time. I, but I mean, I did have friends, but mm -hmm. it just still, it still didn't feel like like home, like yeah. in the way that I guess like London yeah. community and like the friends you've made now yeah. feels like it. So thinking like, cause obviously I know you you have quite a big impact within the beauty fashion industry, mm -hmm. but thinking back to when you were a child, did you have that same level of like connection with with beauty and fashion? I wasn't really into it. You wasn't at all. I think I think really? I think I only found like the passion when I went to when I got into uni. Okay. So I was always into like wearing clothes and stuff. Yeah. I never really like I didn't really pay much attention to it. I, I had the funniest, weirdest looks <laughs> and outfits. Like I go through pictures now, just like yeah. what was I thinking? But then, well, but I mean, everyone does feels like that exactly, anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what what stage did you enter the YouTube community? It was literally the last year of my uni you need yeah you need experience and so at that time obviously year. youtube wasn't really like it's not the way it, it wasn't is. As I, like it's, as it was, it's a yeah. completely different like scene. i didn't even know what it was about it just it was like a, a place where people posted videos of themselves like, so what made what was your first initial thought if you can remember like back then what was your first initial thought when you thought okay i'm gonna go into the, this scene like i'm just i'm gonna post a video um well i started out okay so i was a girl yeah. who always dressed up for like lectures and yeah. stuff so I've hair done Period. outfits everything like makeup yeah and <laughs> Six I, and I, I yeah and i woke <laughs> up and everything i mean well at uni i hadn't i don't think i started wearing wigs wigs at the time really? or weaves so it was just like braids and mm -hmm. stuff like that and like sew-ins so yeah get ready dressed up everything so I, I always got questions like oh how do you get your hair like that mm -hmm. like, what you got on today da, da, da. so Someone was like, why don't you film a video like showing how to curl your hair or wow. like, how to do your mm -hmm. eyebrows? And I was like, why would anybody want to watch that? Like, that sounds really weird. And so like, oh, go on YouTube that people do that. It's like mm -hmm. normal. So obviously watching YouTube videos, yeah. I'm like, oh, I could do this. So it literally started out like in my little dorm mm -hmm. room, like just filming, trying to record myself on like, yeah. a basic camera like yeah. I could find. And then I posted it on my Facebook at the time when I was really into Facebook. And then... People were watching it, and I was like, "Do you oh, remember how many views that got that that first like video?" Five ten views. Really? But I was really excited. I was like, "Oh my gosh, people are watching!" It wasn't me because obviously I was like refreshing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes that counts as a view. Sometimes I was like, "Oh, <laughs> this is a, this is actually my this is not Just my views." Yeah. So yeah, and then I think I must have posted the first. But I think my first ever video was like an eyebrow tutorial mm -hmm. or something on YouTube, and obviously people were getting excited over that. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, like people actually want to watch stuff like this." So Damn. kept on going, and the hair video started coming. Mm. And when was what was the if there's like one video that you remember as like your staple video where you thought, "Oh, this uh, this could actually be a thing." What video would that be? It was even yeah foundation my foundation routine mm -hmm. and then it was another video I don't know if you know the brand Good Hair oh yeah Good Hair was, like was my popping first, back then yeah, that was oh like my, my gosh. first ever like collaboration yeah whatever, yeah yeah so that got like over two million views I still don't two know million. why to this Damn. day I really don't know so at the point when you before even you touch in the YouTube scene mm -hmm. as the the uni you and when you were studying firstly what did you study in uni psychology so when you were studying psychology at that point in your life what was your intention like what did you actually want to do with your career. Well, before the YouTube game, yeah. obviously I was doing psychology. I was like, okay, what am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should do like a, a master's or something. I was going to do clinical psychology. Okay. But then obviously researching into it, I'm like, I'm too emotional. I like, can't to deal with, are like, you? You know, I was going yeah. to be dealing with like, you know, mentally challenged like kids yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I, I would just cry all the time. So like, this is not the road I want to go down. <laughs> I'll be crying to you. So, you crying with yeah, them. I'll just, no. I, I won't be the right fit for yeah, this yeah, yeah. kind of job role. So I think the YouTube thing kind of came at a good time. Yeah. So I wasn't really enjoying like what I was doing the course wise. 
Like mm. I really hated going to lectures, even though I got up to go to lectures, so to beat and everything, but I just didn't enjoy it. So the last, my final year was the year that I decided to, it was kind of like an escape from stuff. So the YouTube bit felt like was an like an escape from like, yeah, lectures yeah, and essays and all that kind of stuff. So, so were you still putting the same level of focus onto um, YouTube? No, the, would you put, were you putting the same level of focus onto your university studies as yeah, I you mean, were I onto I YouTube also? <laughs> I didn't finish everything, yeah. So. Um, it was, like I said, it was kind of like a hobby, like a side thing, outlet, yeah. yeah, at the time. So, obviously, I was still going to lectures, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything, did my dissertation, all that kind of stuff. But I was really, really, really focused on the YouTube thing. It wasn't mm. as focused, but until I graduated, obviously, yeah. that's when I saw that people were actually paying attention, paying attention. and watching stuff. So. so, was that so after graduating? Is that when you, for you, it was like, oh, this could actually be a career? Like, this yeah. could be something that could bring in, you know. Some well, sort at the time, I didn't income. know how much money you could make from yeah. YouTube. So, I obviously, moved back home. Like doing the filming yeah. thing and then more videos are going. I was literally, literally posting like two or three day a day. No way. It was that two or three videos a day. A day. A yeah. day. What are you talking? What are now you we videoing? Wouldn't even do that. This As in, like who's now. actually watching that? Because that's a lot. That's too much. <laughs> no one has time to be doing that. But you know, that was how it, like how dedicated and how excited wow. I was to film videos. Yeah. And I just imagine like the difference of that compared to so now, now is like, crazy. It's, it's a lot to be motivated to even want to post. Sometimes. But you know what I find even more interesting than the difference between now and then? I'm just thinking, how did that conversation with your parents go from being someone who's studying psychology? You come oh back gosh, home and you're like... I always remember, like, my dad today. was like, okay, so, you know, <laughs> is this a hobby? What is this? You know, it was like, it was like oh, so you're going to be doing the psychology thing after? Yeah. Like, no, that this is, this this is, is it. it. He was like, you need to have a plan B. Like, are you going to be doing extra courses? And mm -hmm. like, no, like... This People is what we're do doing this. now. I think until he saw like like my first or second paycheck, he's like, oh, okay, so what paycheck from YouTube? From YouTube, he's like, mm -hmm. oh, so this is actually things. So like now he was well back then he was like always trying to like show me off to his friends and mm -hmm. like my dad's a pastor, so like all his like a pastor friends, like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. my daughter's online doing this. So thing. it was kind of like a thing. So yeah, I think he finally got it when he could, when he saw like what you know what it was about mm -hmm. and how much money it would it could bring in. So he was pretty much on board after that. Did you feel like you had a level of like intention with what you wanted to do with your YouTube? Because I think I'm just thinking that, you know, because at that point it was very new, like you're an yeah. OG and there was no, I think right now there's so many people that you can watch and you can see, oh, mm -hmm. this person was able to, you know, get this house or get this car, da -da -da -da, yeah. maintain this type of lifestyle. For you, there was no blueprint. There was no, oh, you can do this. Yeah, I so didn't what, have like a plan, like, oh, I wanted to do this. Okay. Yeah. So it was just like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I yeah. Feel um, people seem to be you know, enjoying, enjoying it videos, too. Videos like probably inspire someone, even mm -hmm. if it's just the one person. So it was more of just a, it was just a nice thing like, to be doing at that yeah, time. Yeah, I didn't think, oh, I'm this gonna, is gonna, yeah, yeah get this and mm -hmm. get that. Like I, I didn't know how much money you could make and how much like that that side of it. It mm -hmm. was more of just I was enjoying what I was doing. How did you react? Because so I think even at that time, like I can just imagine that none of us were really like online like that. So the mm -hmm. idea of like having like supporters or fans or like yeah. whatever comments in like love this Jenny, be so like this day, is that I not like find it strange. Who are these like, people like it's madness? been almost it's been ten years. A whole I still find I it still find it kind of weird. Really? Like even people when people come up to me like in like the shops and like on the street. Yeah, it's yeah, still, yeah. Still kind of surreal. Because you are kind of a you bit know, of an introvert. I'm um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm like an extrovert introvert. Really. So it depends on who I'm with. Okay. Or, like if I meet for the first time. Yeah. And then I might. I'm, I'm more like an observer, so mm -hmm. I would like, take it in, and then the next time I see you, then it'd be then really in. cool. But then I guess when you have fans, it's like you only have that one moment with yeah. them. Is that quite hard for you? Sometimes I get read wrong because I'm very like you know mm. very like mellow. So yeah. then I come across like. Like, like you're being my a bit favorite word is like stush. That's a word I get oh my a lot. Do you know what? Like, I like, feel like I feel like that leads us like perfectly into like what I kind of wanted to also talk to you about like I think there was a video that you watched and I can't remember exactly the name of it but it was like a while ago where you were kind of just going into depth about you as a human I think like mm -hmm. from you know the beginning when I was watching you your videos weren't really like personalized to like mm -hmm. you know your family um or you know your like relationships I mean, not too much I in mean, a way I did, that I did film a lot of my little brother I don't remember true, but true. besides yeah I get it but, but it wasn't like that, it was very it much like fashion beauty etc yeah. yeah and I feel like where like that like obviously a lot of us were enjoying those kind of videos but I think yeah. sometimes it where there's like so where there's when you get like negative comments about oh I met Jenny on, on um, in real life and you know she wasn't the nicest or whatever whatever and you're thinking bro I'm just I'm an introvert or I'm like this and you're just getting the wrong impression of my character. How do you deal with disattaching yourself from like what the, the, the wrong perception that people can get? I feel like you just, cause you know the truth, you know who yeah. you are, so you don't really let it bother you. I think at the beginning it was, it mm -hmm. did get to me like, why are people thinking that? Or why do people assume this certain thing? But people are always gonna assume stuff regardless. And you can't anyway, let it. So you just have to 
just be and I've tried to be that like from the very beginning up till now like you just I, mean, I do try my best when I, when I do meet people I'm yeah. sure like my f b best foot forward yeah. but sometimes I mean I, I've I have read some stuff of people making up stories of how they what's met like, what's me. the craziest like story you like, read? I can't remember what it was like. So I think it was like in Westfield somewhere. And yeah. Some girl made up some scenario that never even happened. And there was one I was never even there. What did she say? And she said that she met me at some place, and I was like, I never even went. I don't even know where that is. Oh gosh. And it's like people. But what did she say about her experience? I'm just like, trying to like. Oh, she was like, I don't know, like either like too like bougie, didn't want to speak to me, or mm. she was in a rush or something like. But people it's like need to realize like yeah. I'm still a human being. Like yeah. sometimes I'm literally uh, in a rush yeah. or like going through something, and I wear my emotions on my face. Mm -hmm. So. You might think, you might come across, oh, she's been a bit funny, but mm -hmm. I'm just, it's not, nothing to do with you as a person. It's just more of what I was going through before you said hello. Yeah. So I do try my best to be like, but I think but people like expect like this chirpy, like, hey, like mm -hmm. all the time. And it's like, in reality, like not, not everyone is like that. Yeah. Like, and so that's some okay. people portray that on online, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm not gonna be performing for mm -hmm. you. Like, if but I even think even in your videos, you were yeah. never like, oh my god, never like loud, like yeah. So yeah, you like can't <laughs> expect that in real life. Yeah. But then again, if you give me Bailey's alcohol, <laughs> then you probably get that. You might be able to get a little you might bit, get a bit more. You know, I didn't really so, like yeah. touch on your. I think it's quite important, but I know that you obviously moved from Manchester to London at a yeah. point in your career. What was that point, and what was your reasoning behind that? Um, well, I was getting a lot of like, you know, meetings yeah. and like events here. So yeah. I was traveling back and forth. So it just made sense mm -hmm. to like be here because obviously everything was here. Most yeah. of my jobs were here. So it was like, it just, yeah, made sense. And was it quite hard though, like leave, being um, away from, I think I do remember, like, I think you did like, I don't know if it was on Snapchat or whatever. At some point you were talking about like missing family and being like away from family because you were quite close to your siblings. Mm -hmm. My little brother. Yeah, yeah. like how, so how was that like leaving them and having to just In the beginning it was thing. a bit weird. Cause yeah. like I moved straight back mm -hmm. home after you so I didn't have that because most people just get a job and like move away from home yeah. or whatever. I mean, I did live away from home my entire uni life, yeah. so I was kind of used to being away from family anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. It didn't really take that long for me to get used to being away on from my home. own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when moving here. So um, yeah, it was it was fine. So now yeah. for you, do you feel like more like comparing Manchester to London? Does London feel more like home? I to you? couldn't move back to Manchester. Really, I just can't see myself as much as as much as it's so cheap, so much like cheaper yeah. to live there and everything else. Is just it's a vibe there, but mm -hmm. yeah. If so I'm what gonna, is if I'm it? Gonna move somewhere, it would probably be out of the country. So a lot of the times, um, people always refer to you and you know a few other influencers or YouTubers in the industry as mm -hmm. like. OG, how do you hear in that terminology? How does that make you feel? Mixed feelings. I mean, it's it's a it's a good feeling. Like people thinking of you as like, I guess the one that paved the way, or yeah. whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's, it because does facts, feel, it does feel weird to hear. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I, I don't feel like that now. I feel like. So, so many more people that people probably look up to a lot more than me. No, but when, I, I when there's a conversation about OG, like your name is definitely like one of, because the, re the reason I was asking is because I was thinking that when you label someone an OG, does that mean that you're now saying that their relevancy isn't as much as it was then? That's what, I mean, like the, the that's that what I mean by like the good and bad. I feel like you don't see them as like how you did before because like you're thinking of, thinking of them as on the past. Mm -hmm. like. This was the person. Yeah. Usually, it's like past tense. Like yeah. Like she OG. Did oh, this. she was. Oh, facts. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's past as opposed to like she's currently doing this still mm -hmm. for me. So I don't know. I. It's a good feeling to know people. I have that effect on people, but then at the same time, it's like, it's not the greatest it's yeah like it's a current feeling, yeah if that makes sense because it's not like you've all of a sudden stopped and you've gone you know in the mountain somewhere yeah. like nobody I'm knows where Jenny is like yeah. about so yeah yeah and that kind of brings me on to like to talking about the ever-changing world of like social media and mm -hmm. you know I think when you were you know doing YouTube like in the beginning the the market wasn't as like South, like there's so there's just so many everybody changes. had their mom sisters uncles friends everybody doing YouTube. It's just, made it's ridiculous. Every, <laughs> so do you how do you firstly deal with the pressure of knowing that this market is like firstly when was the moment where you realized oh my days this is mar this market isn't only just me and like because back then it was like maybe what six women that we knew that was like oh okay mm -hmm. we're gonna watch this so then we're gonna watch this whereas now there's so many so how do you deal with no when 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 you got to a point of like seeing so many people joining the industry how did that make you feel i mean you kind of have to just, just keep doing you like not trying to because it's, it's it's difficult to not try and like compare yourself yeah. to like what everyone else is doing because everyone's pretty much doing the same thing like mm -hmm. we're all in the same field so like just trying to just stay true to yourself it is hard though i'm not gonna lie like mm -hmm. i can't say i've never tried to compare myself to anyone else mm -hmm. but i just but then again, it's like, 
I'm me for a reason, so why would I want to do that anyway? And people mm. are watching me for a reason, so mm -hmm. why would I want to be changed to fit into anybody else's way of doing mm. things? So I think I just got used to it. I just kept just doing me, really. Does it kind of, like, I can imagine that it would, like, amp up the level of, like, things that you would need to put into the content, like, mm -hmm. whether it, that's in terms of, you know, getting better equipment or, you know, delivering, like, better content, longer content. Yeah. What, did, what effect did it have on you when the market started to get bigger? Yeah, I mean, I did, I did definitely brainstorm, like, what other things. Cause obviously, I was just, at the time, I was just, you know, obviously, I was beauty by JJ, so I was just doing beauty. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, yeah. I need to, like, you know, be more versatile and do mm -hmm. other things and get more of, a, like, a more audience. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the fashion side. Mm -hmm. I tried the lifestyle side. I'm still trying to do the vlogging. The vlogging thing sometimes the can be a bit is, overwhelming. The vlogging is, but it's so intense. Like, I've been on so many trips. I've actually vlogged, but mm -hmm. they've never made it to YouTube because it's just, I just, I don't know, I just don't feel like it's... Into, like, I don't know, I don't feel like it's interesting enough, mm -hmm. but like I have brainstormed different things. Like there was one point I even thought about doing the whole relationship thing. Like, really? tag. like maybe that would bring some more followers and make me more like, I don't know, relevant or I don't mm -hmm. know, just, just different things. But I was thinking like, do I really want to like jeopardize like my integrity or certain mm -hmm. things? Like the certain things I probably wouldn't do and mm -hmm. some people have done that yeah. have kind of like excelled them and they've kind of like progressed a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I, I do struggle with that. Like, oh, maybe there's like, Finding the bright balance, like yeah. you know, how do I still stay true to myself, but mm -hmm. then still, um, still kind of cater to what people want to see as mm -hmm. well, like you know. So it, it can be hard sometimes. I can freaking imagine you know. that it's like a daily battle. <laughs> and then me, I think yeah. even even more than that, the battle of so you not only have you know the videos that you because at first it was like you were producing videos on YouTube and then mm -hmm. sometimes you might drop a video a, a picture on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. Whereas now you have Twitter, you have Instagram, you have Snapchat, Snapchat and whatever and catering to all, all these and then I noticed at one point that you obviously no not even at one point you still do them you do um, the TikTok videos which obviously mm -hmm. do really well on your page as well yeah. so it's almost as though do you ever feel like you need to chase like what's what's going on in the present moment and it's doing well I mean it, it, it does help to sometimes jump on the, the current mm -hmm. trends and stuff because it does actually it, ben it, it brings it does bring in you know and it is beneficial sometimes it gets overwhelming mm -hmm. like no, so imagine. now there's like instagram reels like it's I'm like just, do i now start i've doing just started tiktok you know I mean? like i don't understand it's like, let like me, can i much? just breathe for a sec you know <laughs> so i mean sometimes you kind of need to be in like up to date with what's going on but yeah. at the same time i mean it's not by force as well because mm -hmm. people mean, can see it like it's yeah. when, when it's not organic and not genuine yeah. like it's like you're just trying too hard. And you were talking about, you know, um, expanding the, your YouTube space. Mm -hmm. Is that why you change your... Because at first it was strictly everything was Beauty by JJ. Yeah. So what was the thought process behind, behind moving, moving from Beauty by JJ to Jenny Jenkins? Just obviously, like, I wanted to be more versatile and yeah. reaching a, a more wider audience. Mm -hmm. Obviously, then that brings in, like, more brand, you know, deals and collaborations. Because if, yeah. if you just stick into beauty, then obviously a brand who's doing lifestyle or yeah. fashion wouldn't approach you. Mm -hmm. So it was just obviously to get more experience and get more opportunities. How do you feel about your audience? Because obviously a lot of us were quite used to that idea of like, beauty by JJ. Mm -hmm. and, like, did, was, did you get any, was there any backlash from, like, that ch name change? Or did people understand it quite? Like, did you even speak about it at all? I did. Or was it just I like... Did, I, did. I mean, people still call me that, to be honest. Beauty by JJ. Yeah, I still get... I the, get both. Yeah, I get no, I get JJ, that. JJ, JJ, and Jenkins, whichever one. So mm -hmm. it, it, it was kind of like an okay, like a smooth trend. I didn't feel any, yeah, there wasn't any negative vibes from that. I mean, they, people understood what I was doing, mm -hmm. you know. So, no, I get that. I mean, the JJ does stand for something, so they... It, they understand that it. it's the name, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like, that for you, like, is that a decision that you'll still stick by as, like, that was the right move in yeah, terms definitely. of just moving into, like, definitely. a... Because, like, even now, like, yeah. I know people do still watch me for beauty. Like, my heart isn't really beauty really? as much as it used to be like what if, is what if is I, you know i'm more like i feel like i'm more on the fashion side okay. if i if i had my way like that would be what i was doing really but i can't kind of neglect that side because obviously a lot of people still ask for videos yeah, yeah. Well, and that's kind of what made me as well so i can't completely shut that off mm -hmm. so but like i said if i had to like go into my head i probably would be in the fashion side i i enjoy that so much more like mm -hmm. i i don't really get inspired and motivated from the beauty. I mean, beauty has changed yeah, so, so much. much. So much. So, so much. I mean, it's understandable that 
people still yeah. get like music. so then when you yeah. create like yeah because i know you don't you don't create as much beauty content as you did before but when you do create it is it quite intense for you because i'm thinking that if it's something that you don't thoroughly like enjoy in the way that you did before it must be a bit of a, like a mental challenge of like oh it is hard i'm not gonna really? lie like it's hard and i feel bad as well because like i said people still want to see those yeah. kind of videos you know i'm kind of like in the same world as well where yeah. like you're working with like fashion brands or whatever mm -hmm. so when deciding that you wanted to you know create like your own whether it was a fashion line or whether it's a beauty line it, it did any part of it have anything to do with the idea that so for a long time like you've been in this industry for like 10 years now for a long time a lot of these brands have been pulling from you and like paying you for something that you can do almost create for yourself mm -hmm. was that a part of the th thought process with you i mean it's always good to have a plan b and have yeah. like something that you can call yours mm -hmm. i mean just from like a business side of things and yeah. obviously if like future wise you don't yeah. know how long youtube's gonna go on for I, I don't that's see the mad thing about this i don't like see myself i don't know i don't see myself like hey guys forever <laughs> no like it's it's no it's not me really not, like there will be a oh my gosh I don't that's see breaking doing, news like, you just said that's not you i mean i feel like a lot of people might say that too but maybe not be like want to say it out loud yeah you i know? think you have to get to a level of like real like self-acceptance yeah. to like say this isn't me i mean it's been 10 years a long time wow. i can't see myself doing the family vlogs i mean i'd love to maybe i mean maybe i won't i won't say i'll completely like shut down youtube yeah but i don't feel like I'd, it'd be my main source of like income yeah so i mean it's always good to have like plan b's c's mm. and d's and e's and f's and you know multiple streams so mm. that's the vibe but yeah I, yeah the, the hey guys thing is not gonna last for it's so funny because I, I feel like that's I feel like right now and I don't know if it's like what's going on in the world with COVID and like us being yeah. at home and like really thinking and being our own heads mm -hmm. a lot of like and I don't know if you've noticed this but like a lot of people who have this you know online presence whether it's on YouTube and Instagram a lot of them have been having this conversation of like bro I'm not gonna lie like I don't think this is something that I'm going to be deep like doing mm -hmm. forever so was your did your thought process of like you know the hey guys isn't going to be an everlasting thing start from when we were in lockdown before lockdown before well, really before lockdown. i don't know if you watched that documentary the social media one where it was talking about like what they're doing on social media and how that affects your mind you no. need to watch this it. on netflix it's no. basically okay. saying that um I think I've that, seen it though. Like we're basically being it. controlled. I was posting my stories the other day because I was like, oh my gosh, this is bad, we're being controlled. Yeah. And it's similar to what you're explaining that it's almost like a drug. It's like you get, so let's say you, you create this amazing content and it gets all the love that you want and you're like, and then it, for, in that moment you're happy, but then yeah. the feeling is so fleeting because the next day you know that you need to create something else. And if that something else doesn't get, you know, near enough the same amount of views or the same amount of likes, whatever, yeah. you, you feel like shit again. But yeah. And then it's like, where do we go from here? And you just feel like for you, it's almost kind of like, that that level of inconsistency and emotion that your career brings you is just mm -hmm. too much. How do you much, deal with those moments? Much. I don't know. Like I just sometimes I just disappear for a bit. Like I, I have really? moments where I'm just like not on socials and like people just people just don't know what goes on like yeah. behind. I mean that that saying is very true. You just don't know what people are going through. Yeah. Like I have a like even before lockdown. I think probably lockdown probably solidified, solidified it more for me. Like the mental state of things is mm -hmm. just a lot. Like. It has taken a toll on me. Really? You know, but it's like, you kind of, you can't, I feel like you can't be, you can't complain or you can't feel away because mm. you have people who still look up to you, people who still expect stuff mm. from you. Obviously, I'm still my own person. Still I still human. have my yeah. own life to live. Yeah. But I still feel bad sometimes. I don't, I don't know why I feel bad. Like, I'm allowed to not want to. Feel, feel bad about what, though? Not putting content out or yeah. not giving what people want to yeah. want from me or you know that consistency like like it used to be yeah so it's like it's a constant battle like honestly and it's it can be overwhelming and i live alone so imagine Ooh. having the thoughts for yourself you don't mm -hmm. want to you don't really want to bother your friends yeah. by like and i think the th interesting know. thing about friends and just people in general is that unless you're in this industry unless you're in this bubble you kind of won't understand because it's yeah. so new that it's like Bro, like you'll get money for posting. That's how people see it. They're like, oh, you're posting a video and you're making money. And the, yeah. like, I have to go to nine to five and I have to work all day. And it's like, all the time. it's, it's, so it's like, I'm not allowed. You can't complain. You can't like, complain. You, you have it easy kind of thing. And it's like, like, that's not it. But it's a, there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. you know? What's your go to in terms of like maintaining like your mental well being? Uh, coming off socials. Really? But I feel like this year. Like, you said music it, as well. Music, yeah. So it's the first thing I just not go on like online because mm -hmm. sometimes it can just drain you. Like so much stuff happens, and what people now have normalized now is just so depressing. Mm. And things just in what sense? So, what like, do you mean? Just like, things that people worry about or things mm. that go on, and it's just like there's more to life than all of this. Mm. And I don't know. I feel like I can't even. I can't even say that. Like because I'm obviously I'm in that in that, You're in that world, world as well. Yeah. But like sometimes I, I just want to like I feel like I miss like being 
not so much a nobody, but being like out of that. Mm -hmm. Cause like some of my friends who are not in that scene, like I actually envy like how they live their lives because they don't have to worry about oh, stuff. Oh my God. They have to worry about like having oh to gosh. have people assume stuff of you mm -hmm. or expect compare this you. or compare or like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that, and obviously music is like a big part. Like if I don't, if I'm not on socials for a while and I come online, like on my stories, I'm, I'm literally like, being the cringy is like singing mm -hmm. or doing whatever that's like my happy moment and just mm -hmm. know that before that i was probably feeling really down mm -hmm. so that's a ma my way of showing like i've just going out of something really low and really dark so no, i get you so yeah music has, has played a big part for me i'm just thinking you know. in in regards to like the the conversation about like comparison because i know like when it comes to compare like i i'm like oh my god can we just not because <gasps> i am myself yeah. and i'm myself for a reason and i feel like if we're going back to even present times and like before as well there was like one main comparison that like you just naturally and i, I don't mean i don't want to say naturally but i think a lot of people just did that comparison between like you and patricia bright in those moments where like i think the, the back then the um the content that was being produced by you know both halves was like very different mm -hmm. how did you feel about well not very different it was, it was different in its own way how did you feel about that comparison then and now? Um, I still feel the same. Mm -hmm. was, Do you actually remember it? Was, Do you still I feel everything. it? I really? remember everything. Okay. It was low-key annoying, I'm not going to lie. Really? Like, it was like, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I get it, we were both doing... We're both in the same kind of industry, but yeah. we were doing... I mean, we were kind of... Mm, we weren't doing the same thing, but we're, it was kind of similar. It was similar, and it's like yeah. what kind of content we were giving out. But it was two different personalities. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's... I feel like she's changed a lot mm -hmm. from what she was back. I mean, most people yeah, have anyway, grow. like, yeah. which is understandable. Yeah. But like, I just didn't get why people always wanted to. But I, I still feel like a lot of the time it was just the followers wanting to like play off each other, and I just they just found the drama more interesting, which mm -hmm. I really just didn't understand. Like, people enjoyed that, mm -hmm. so I'd get like tweets like, "Oh, did you see what she said? She might be talking about you." Mm. But there probably wasn't anything to do with me in the first place. Did you ever react like, to those tweets though? Like, would I you never, go back? Have and, like, you ever check? seen me react to anything online? Fact. No, but like that's like, publicly though. But like I'm saying, when you're at home, like would you? Because if if someone's commenting and they're like, "Oh, she said something about you," in this I mean, video, I'll be like, like eh, "Let me see I'll what she's be, saying." I mean, I, yeah, I would have a look at it and be in, in uh, the group chats. And yeah, stuff yeah. And have a, Targets or friends and stuff, but like I never publicly said anything. Of course, yeah. She's like I don't, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I, you probably probably seen a couple of people who might have had a, who might not have great things to say about me. Yeah, you might have. But it's seen, not your job. But to I like don't. But you find that the, the people who are usually in the wrong are the ones who are saying the loudest, mm -hmm. saying the most things online. Like I have never reacted to anything online. Because I don't see the point. Mm. Like if you have an issue with someone, you talk to them like personally. Like I don't get the whole online stuff. So yeah, it was annoying, but like I never really. To be, f I don't know. Whoa. It was it was a funny time. Like I don't know. Whoa. I couldn't even say much about this, but Girl. back then it was a lot. Yeah. Like the whole back and interaction. forth thing. Because I remember people but. would be like, oh, because I know like you know back then like there was a big thing, and it's not as much now, but like people doing like videos together, and you guys never did a video together, and yeah. I think that's where it kind of came from. Because people but were like, it's not by why you true fact. Thing about hundred percent. I feel like people just assume like everyone should be friends with, with each other, yeah, like, because you're all doing the same thing. But I think back then though, because it was so small, it's like oh, it's because e I'm, I'm just thinking as a viewer, like I feel like it'll be easier to make the the. Just assume that oh my gosh there must be some sort of beef wrong. there because like, you know yeah, they're not I mean, they're not engaging and like she's engaging with this person or she's engaging with this person. But was she though? I mean, like in terms of like our community, like, yeah, I guess the black community, mm -hmm. like you have the people who hang hang hang, hang out around together, together yeah, know, but like. We had different like different mm -hmm. circles, no, so we would never really. I mean, the, the odd like event here and there, but we never really like. Because so it wasn't by force. You can't yeah. assume, or mm -hmm. you can't expect everyone to like be pally with each other. Just no, I get that. And, it's not, and it doesn't have to be like something's, something's wrong. It's just, it's just that's just not the vibe. And that's the thing I get a lot. Like if you don't, if you don't see someone in your videos or in your stories mm -hmm. or in your snaps, like there must be something wrong. There mm. must be a beef. And it must be someone's fault. Mm. And it's just like it gets annoying. Like it's not by force. And and I think about social media, like it's very. It's like a smoke screen. Like mm. you see, like I see a lot of people in real life and yeah. what they're about, and they're not the same online. Uh, so I'm not about, about to be doing all this fake friends yeah, situation. 100%. Like it's just not me. Like I've this is how I've been. You kind of kept the same like unit the same, from, yeah, from 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 the beginning. To be fair, I've seen what it's like. Mm -hmm. I've seen how people are in real life, mm -hmm. and I'm not about to be fake friends with you. If I, if, if I don't 
rock with you like that. I'm, I won't pretend yeah. for socials or pretend for snaps or no, stories. I hear that. And I, it happens a lot in like events where everyone comes together and they do the whole like the group pictures, the group videos, and whatever. But like, for, for what reason? Mm. Like, and then that's it. You go your separate ways. Like, I don't have the time. It seems like a lot more effort to do that than just be building an actual relationship you know, if you want to. I'd much rather have like one or two yeah, actual like friends, friends and just like maintain yeah. that than do fake mm. like acquaintances. It's just, it's not it's me. It's not you. I love that. So. I wanted to even, to be fair, have a conversation with you about something that I messaged you about personally. Okay. Um, the Just about the dealing with like brand... Um, mm -hmm deals and like agencies because obviously i saw that you had posted that not posted it was like on your bio and it it was in your mm -hmm. bio and it was like yeah. blogger agency and i like was like hey like oh my gosh you're with you know this agency i don't know if i should say the name i mean you call i mean i'm out i don't care i don't care okay either, cool. so, so obviously we had the blogger agency yeah and i was like oh my gosh um, you're with a blogger agency, they're trying to sign me, like, you know, is this a good deal? Like, you were like, no, 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 like, get out. Like, I'm, you're still, you're like in a, some sort of a battle with them. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of talk me through that? Because I think a lot, especially for like a lot of the new girls mm -hmm. walking into this industry, they don't understand how mess up a lot of these agencies are and how much they'll play with your mind because the industry is so new. So kind yeah. of just talk to me about like that process with that, with them. I have never had a positive like experience with management mm. which is really interesting never I, I, intent what? ever since I've, I've been i haven't okay i've only been with two yeah management well two and a half one of them didn't anyway <laughs> two and a half yeah two and a half yeah. and it's, it's always told you this like this amazing like this dream like oh we're going to do this for you and mm -hmm. this brand works with you want to work with you for this and this and this and we have this whole like breakdown of how we want everything to go yeah. and they just never they never deliver mm. and this particular one like it was just they were just taking the piss yeah. like every time mm. and the thing about contrast you have to be really really knowledgeable like the small were you like when you were I mean, reading like, the I read it yeah and everything because i did like, i was like oh my god but it was just like i said they just sold you this dream yeah, so it's like they, okay well it must be legit it must be everything it's mad know? like yeah. they'll actually finesse you right in front of your eyes you know i've seen a couple of people who who they say they've worked with and they say seem to be doing well so maybe they are yeah. legit too so like and then obviously get to a point where like you're bringing me no jobs mm. like i'm doing the jobs myself mm -hmm. like i'm people coming to so me so were they trying to take the cut of the job that you were also bringing yourself they wanted to cut as well like you haven't brought me this job so why would you want any money from me? 100%. I mean, there's some money management who do that anyway. Yeah. Like anything that you get, CC them in and they take. But then you haven't brought that to me. So why mm -hmm. would you need to take any cut from, from this? Any, yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me. So, oh, like it was long. Really? Like it was a long you went battle. through a solicitor as well, Yeah, I had to, get, I had to pay for solicitor. Oh like gosh. it wasn't like, this is not money. To, I don't want me to throw money away. Like oh for gosh. what? Like I didn't. How much did I you can say? Like a thousand pounds. Oh my gosh. Just to get them to like, Leave like they own. wanted to like, they, they created this, this like brand new contract. Like, oh, if I leave, yeah. even after a year, they, they're still entitled to whatever I get. I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me. Like, excuse me. Are you okay? Like, I don't understand. So yeah, so I was like, no, I'm not having this. Cause like, I, they want, how do you want to still keep me on when you're not bringing any jobs for me? And I, I don't want to be with you. Yeah. So why do you still want to hold on to it? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, all that back and forth, I just they eventually had to let go. But yeah, having to pay that money, I wasn't happy at all. No, I can actually. It wasn't, so, like, so you know how you said that, like over, the, you just have never had a, like a good experience with yeah, management. Like, so does that make you not want to like have a, man, a management? Then? I mean, there's two sides, but I feel like the people who are obviously I, my colleagues, I guess you want to call it, like mm -hmm. they seen how well they've done, like how they've grown. Like mm -hmm. some of them do have management and that's been, that's why they have done so well. Yeah, because I think got management in. quite I feel like it's, it's, impo it's, it's good to have, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I've done a lot of the work, 98% of the work myself. Well, know, the emails, the reaching myself. out. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. It's a lot. But, but it's nice to have someone, it's but a at lot. the same time, but are they really writing for you? Are they really, really like checking for mm -hmm. you though? Like, are they, actually have your best interest in heart yeah. not just using you for your numbers because mm -hmm. most of them just want to have you on there on their books that's and it's it like, oh, yeah she's got Facts. so and so many followers Facts, so it's yeah. good for like when brands reach out so like i, I mean I, I would still love the idea of management you know i've had a couple i've had a couple of trials like mm -hmm. at the start of the year but they just you know just I just, it pleasing. just seems like i was just getting more work myself mm -hmm. you know? i guess because obviously you advised yeah. me really well at that point because i think yeah. prior to that everybody else i was speaking to that i dm's they were like oh no they're cool da, da, da. and when you dm's me i was like oh my gosh and that's when yeah. i read the contract properly and i was like this is a bit weird so what advice would you give to any like the the, the other girls who are like jumping into this industry and don't know anything about you know contracts or dealing with you know agencies. Being someone who've dealt with numerous agencies who've been absolutely rubbish, yeah. how would you say they can navigate their um, way in that sense? 
again, just get someone who knows much about the whole legal system of things. Like, I have no clue what mm -hmm. when it comes to all that kind of stuff. So get someone who knows how to, like, yeah, read through mm -hmm. stuff for you and just show you everything, the fine print and all that kind of stuff. And research the, the, the I guess, the management, the company and mm -hmm. what they've done, like, who they've worked with and mm -hmm. how successful they've been and how much work they actually bring in on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Not just, like, once every three, four months. That's just not going to fly. No, I hear that. So, um, and obviously have a few... So like, I think trial periods are very important, not mm -hmm. just signing straight away, because you can get locked down or something and mm -hmm. then you can't get out of it. So doing trial periods would um, help a lot as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and obviously having like, having like a, a little breakdown of what you want, what you want them for and what you want them to give what you, you want them to do. Offer. So yeah, having mm -hmm. that clear and stating it to them as it's what I want and it's very important because they okay. can just they can finesse a lot of stuff so quickly me. as well especially when you don't know much so a question or a conversation that i always like find interesting to hear you know with whoever i have on um it's just kind of talking about purpose just because i feel like purpose like knowing and understanding my personal purpose and how i feel about that topic overall allows me to like lead a certain like lifestyle or just life in general mm -hmm. so i kind of wanted to like kind of wanted to understand where you feel like you fit when it comes to talking about purpose for yourself. Do you feel like you're in alignment with what you consider, when, when talking about the ideal purpose, is that something that you feel like you're in alignment with? Like with everything you're doing right now, honestly? Um, hmm. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there's still more to give and more to achieve on my on my side. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if I if I would completely say like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I mean, maybe I am. I just mm -hmm. don't really I don't really know it for sure. Yeah. But I, I guess even but if, like, if that doubt is even in play, like even that doubt of maybe I am, that means maybe not. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if it was a case of like oh yeah, hundred percent, then it would be hundred percent. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, I know what I'm doing is yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see myself in another sort of like field, field mm -hmm. but, I still f I, but I still feel like there's, there's, there's more mm -hmm. that can be. What would the more be attached to? Is it more of like an attachment to like you producing more content or you doing more for other human beings? Or is it, do you know what I mean? Like what does the more actually like mean? Probably the latter. I don't know. Mm. It could be a bit of both. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. obviously it's been like the last two years for me hasn't been like the greatest like mentally. So I really? guess coming out of that mm -hmm. will probably give me more of like a clearer view on things. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm yeah. No, I, do, you know what, right? do you know what I'm realising from you what know? you're saying? I think there's oh. been like a lot of moments like in this conversation where like there's something that you kind of want to get into. But I think that you're not like certain if you do. Because you kind of said it like twice now that like at the, this current like moment like in life in the mm. last like two years year it hasn't been like mentally the strongest mm -hmm. but i think you know a lot of people can be like oh yeah like say that as like a fleeting comment but mm -hmm. to you and like to the people who might be watching this i think it is if you're comfortable enough it is important to understand like what does that actually mean like what was the wh number one what does that mean and what was the lead up to like you not even being in like a you know mentally like good place so let's we can start from the first what one. Like, what does that what does that mean to you? Like not being in like this have been just been through. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that has happened in the space of two years that kind of taken a toll on me. Like yeah. I feel like I lost myself as well. Mm. So it within this within this industry or just in general? More of like pers my personal personal okay. life. Got you. So I guess that took a toll a lot. Like I just wasn't able to do anything. Mm. And I just I wasn't really like happy with myself. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I've never really doubted myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, bef I mean, I wouldn't say like I never had like. You're an Aries. You guys don't doubt yourself. yourself. Like, I mean, that's the thing about. <laughs> that's why I say like I feel like I don't always follow completely follow those zodiac true. signs because okay. like sometimes some things might not be completely like true to you, true to me. Yeah. But like, yeah, like there's just. I just went through a period and it affected everything. Like, how my, long did that period go on for? Like, like I said, like two years, mm. and obviously this, the lockdown kind of made it even more, even worse. Really? Like when you're alone in your thoughts mm -hmm. and you really can't like, because like out. I'm used to being alone anyway. Like I like my space, I like my little quiet time. But then mm -hmm. when you like, and that's by choice. But then when you're made to not go out, and mm. it's a bit, it's a lot. It takes a toll on you, and Mentally. you can't really do what you want to do and mm -hmm. see who you want to see. Like people who actually help you like Deal feel with better that. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, there's a lot of personal stuff that happened over the last two years mm. and that just kind of took a toll on me. 
and it just affected like I said, it affected everything. Like, Do you think you're out of the other you know, si you're on the other side of I that? I feel like I'm, I'm definitely out of that, mm -hmm. but I think there's still some little, still some bits here that and there. Like I'm still trying to like mm -hmm. you know fine tune. If that's the word. You know the idea yeah. that like when you know you have like a, a moment in your life when things aren't going great and mentally like you're not all the way together. Mm -hmm. There's this idea that you know when you come out of that or when you're on the road to getting out of that, there's so much of yourself that you uncover mm -hmm. um, that you that is almost like oh my gosh like this is me and having like a I, new profound understanding yeah, I felt of you. That a lot. This this, the last really? few months it's crazy what would be like the main like, if you want to share of course like for you that you're like oh my gosh like this has been hiding a little bit I don't know if I want to delve personal. into just yet like I feel like I'm still trying to figure yeah. still figuring it all out mm -hmm. you know but it's 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 wild what you've That's like discovered for yeah. yourself does it have yeah. anything to do with like the? Because I feel I I get the vibe that there's gonna be like a a big transition for Jenny Jenkin. Like I I don't know. Like and correct me if I'm wrong. I just feel it with the way you're talking. Even when we were talking well, earlier. I hope so. I hope so. You, you think know, so? You never know. You never know. Watch the space. I guess. I love that. But yeah, I feel like I've just I've held that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, like you know, share my full potential and stuff. Yeah. And I've just been like. Go time now. Not letting things get to me and affect my growth. Yeah. You know? And it's time to yeah, literally just push through and push I forward. Love that. So. So kind of yeah. like aligning yourself like closer to the idea of purpose. Yeah. I love that. I feel much. like this is Pretty like much. a perfect way to like end the conversation. That was beautiful. I hope I, I hope I made made things clear. I don't know. No, you did. Like, you actually did. Like um. <laughs> yeah. No, that was good. You good. Perfect. That was really good. Wow. Woo. 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 Woo.